Spindle P577, stroke one, path one, take one. You can get the bus round the corner. A very good morning, Alex Spindle. Mackelson, huh? You come this side of the river now? Not often. Eddie Edwards is as jealous of his territorial rights as Cock Robin. Then why today? You, Alec. I was expecting Edwards to be here. Oh, where are you? Oh, but your wife keeps Eddie so busy. At least so they tell me. Who does? <laughs> you always did tease, Alec. I was wondering if you'd care for a lift to Hampstead. What would I do there? Well, we can talk. The old days, the new days. The air is so much clearer and cleaner north of the river. Hampstead gets foggy. I prefer the south. My south. You haven't time to be sentimental, Alec. Haven't I? We'll see. And for a start, you get out of my backyard. Mine again, Michelson, since eight o'clock this morning. I'm not even sure you've got a backyard now, Alec. Shoot wide and high, tell him. Yes, sir. What's your interest, Sonny? I'm on the... I'm on the paper. I've got this piece in about you, about your release. What for? I might not want publicity. Your news. It's a fact. At your trial. A long time ago, Sonny. Any plans for the future, Mr. Spindle? Yes. You may hear, and you may not. Billy Humphreys? Yes? Well, any comment, Mr. Spindle? He's been missing for a long time now. Billy? Billy has. Like your other key men, Rex Parsons, Luke Cordner. How old are you, Sonny? 25. No, uh, four, actually. At this rate, you won't reach 30. <laughs> well, we have to dig for the big news. Eh? Yes, well, you can dig too deep. Touch nerves. You didn't know Humphreys was missing. No, but don't build anything on that. The whisper is Eddie Edwards killed him. You know... They should bring back national service for fellows like you. Now, listen, Sonny. 
Keep away from me. I'm out. And there is no story, and there is no comment. The smoke's thick, Mr. Spindo. Macklesson in North London, Eddie Edwards down here, even the Times leader last Tuesday asked questions. Gang merger or gang warfare? Trying to up its circulation. Now cool down, Sonny. Or it's you that'll be burnt up and out. You see what I mean? But that isn't news. Yes. Yeah. Somebody didn't mean it. Yet. God, Mr. Spindle, who... who do that? Now, nothing happened. Did it? Now, get away from me. I've had too many too close for five years. Go on. Write a pretty piece about the pretty people. Jesus. <coughs> Billy Garn. Oh, no. And Mike, Jerry, Lou, Rex, and David, blown away with the years. Now, Billy. So that leaves just me. And Eddie, with Mackelson cruising around to grin at me. But why get dead, Billy, you stupid? Oh, it's no good getting sentimental, Alec. Your wife keeps Edward so busy. Who am I talking to? Five years. I'll slaughter him. No. No, darling. Alec comes to us. Me. And when he does? <laughs> I can't wait. His face. This. I'll explain. He'll understand, because he can't do else. Now, the world can't ever stand still, ever. Now, it's all expanded since his day. Now, he left me with a couple of cheap local enterprises in Streatham. <laughs> Streatham. But, but now, nothing moves south of the river without me taking my percentage. Our percentage, Sheila. Ours. <laughs> oh, poor old Alec. He'll be as pale as a ready peeled potato. Can you get paler? Alec will, when he hears. He won't get near you, darling. No, I know he won't. I know. And don't start feeling sorry for him, as it upset me. <laughs> he doesn't even know we live here yet. Now, why is that funny? Why? <laughs> I find that funny. Well, you'll find out. Yes, yes, someone will tell him, some little whisper. I dare say he's still got a few small friends somewhere, rooting about.
that's why they raised the bank rate. You saw me before. I'd like to speak to Mr. Murrell, please. Mr. Murrell? He's manager at Carshalton now. Is he? Oh, well, then I'd like to see the present manager, please. Now, Mr. Fairbrother only interviews by appointment. Well, then I would like an appointment, for now. It is engaged at the moment, sir. Can I help, Mr...? Uh, uh, Spindo, yes, well, yes, you can. Uh, I'm a customer here, very good customer, very good. I'd like a checkbook first, please. Of course, sir. You haven't a slip. Uh, no, no, I, I mislaid that some time ago. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. A. Spindo. Uh, that's right. 18 Gracefield Gardens is the last address we have for you. That's right. That's my address, my house. Oh, excuse me. Well, I asked you for a checkbook. Yes, yes, excuse me. I'm just having a statement prepared. For I you. didn't ask you for a just statement. Just a moment, sir. <sighs> there we are, sir. Deposit nil. Current overdrawn two thousand four hundred and twenty two pounds. <laughs> and one and threepence overdrawn, sir. <laughs> no, no, you've got the wrong name. No, sir. The deposit account was in the name of A. Spindo, and the current account was a joint one with your wife, Mr. A. and Mrs. S. Spindo. We checked the numbers on both accounts. You have? Well, listen to me, Sonny. I had two thousand two hundred and fifty pounds in my deposit account and five thousand four hundred pounds in my current account. And I also had here three insurance policies which were lodged with the bank, together with the deeds of the house in Gracefield Garden, which was not on mortgage, also investments which five years ago were worth £12,000 or more. Now, I'd like to see the manager, so get him. I'm very sorry, sir. It's Will you get him? Yes, I'll try. Mr. Spindle. Oh, yes. Um, look. This. Yes. Well, we've been trying to get in touch with your wife, but our letters have been returned. Not known. Not known? Mm. We've also been in touch with her solicitors, also without any response. So far. Um, have you got an office where we can talk? I have a customer with me already. Uh, yes, well, well, look. Uh, my wife has overdrawn the current account, but the deposit account, well, that was in my name alone. Uh, Mr. Petty, fetch our records, would you? And the house, that was only in my name, and that was worth... Mr. Spindle. When I took over this branch two years ago, the former manager explained to me that your affairs were, by nature, a little complex. Well, I understood and that. And that, furthermore, most of your estate was technically in your wife's name or in limited companies, for the usual reasons of spreading the tax burdens and whatever. He also told me that while you had always been a trusted customer with him from his point of view, you were, in fact, at that moment... Good morning. Good morning. At that moment, detained in prison. Yes, well, I'm out now, today, and I want what's mine. Not technically mine, just mine. Well, it would seem that your wife has no, every right no, to... leave her name out of it. Don't mouth her name at me. Everything wasn't in her name. The house was. No! We have copies of the letters you sent to your solicitors authorising the change of ownerships. Change of... But... But the insurance policies, they were in my name. Well, two, I believe. I'd have to check. You cashed, no. and the third's collateral secures the present overdraft. No, I did not cash them, nor did I authorize the use of any of them as, as security against any overdrafts. Well, Mr. Pettit here will give you the full picture. Now, you really must excuse me. I can't keep my present customer waiting any longer. Uh, by the way, I imagine you haven't spoken to your wife yet. No. No. I should. <clears throat> Your letter concerning the transfer of the house to your wife 
in your letter to the insurance companies. You see, they, tr they questioned the wisdom of your request, and uh, this was your reply. I didn't write any of these. These are all photostatted copies with your usual signature, one we have always acknowledged in the past. In this one, you instruct your brokers to sell your holdings in Chinwell Limited and United Alloys. All these were requested from your solicitors. They hold the originals. Now, well, here you ask that the resultant capital realised be paid into the account of a Mr. E. Edwards. We checked on him, and your solicitors assured us that it was, in fact, your partner Took it all. Another... Took everything. She and Edwards. On my name. On my signature. Oh, no, 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 no not Sheila. No, she... Uh, she'll, uh... She'll have invested elsewhere. Um, uh, I, I, I want these. Uh, no, sir. I'm very sorry. You must apply to your solicitors. Yes. All, all right, yes. Well, uh, you keep them. They're worthless. Ruddy, keep them! Good God, that's 30,000 pounds. Do you understand? Such a sum? Can you realise such a sum? You gave it away. Give it, no check. No word to me. Just give to the first person who asks. Your, your usual signature. Oh, yes. Everybody trusted it. It wasn't worth the paper was written on. But my signature. Sheila. Oh, Sheila. Bunny, Alex Spindo, I'm Bat Boy. You bastard. Sorry, excuse me. Larry. Larry Bolsover. Mr. Spindo. <laughs> well, how are you? You're looking great. Yeah, I'm all right. Oh, I didn't even know you came into the old place. Hey, you've done it up, though, haven't they? Well, when I came in, I thought I, I didn't think I was in the right cafe. You know? uh, yeah, they did it up uh, last year, I think. Yes. Well, come on, come on. Let, let's have something to eat. I'm well, starving. Uh, oh, he's new, too, isn't he? Uh, two uh, pizzas and two cappuccinos. No, I'm please. not hungry. Thanks for the same. Oh, well, I am. Oh, come on, come on. You'll, you've got to have something. Yeah, well, a small blend. Uh, well, uh, you heard that, you know. Get it, all right? Well, how's the garage? So, when? Didn't you know? Oh, yes, yes, uh, yes, last year. Well, no, stupid, you know. Yes, I've been reorganizing the garages, you know, through Eddie Edwards. He's been looking after my business while I've been inside. Yeah, but it wasn't last year. It was nearly five years ago, wasn't it? Uh, oh, yes, that one. Oh, I, I thought you worked for me in the Stockwell garage. Oh. No, I, I never worked there. No, no. Yes, well, well, what are you up to now? Oh, uh, this and that. Uh, still motors, mainly. All legitimate, well, very nearly. Uh, only one out the four's a bit warm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you cut down on a motor side, didn't you, Mr. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There's no, no real money in it now. So they tell me, you know. Well, I didn't want to, you know, but um, Eddie Edwards advised him. He said he thought it would be far... Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, that's yours. Ah. 
Mr. Spindo, you know you're poison. You hear that? No. So I'm, I'm bad luck as far down the line as you, Larry. Hmm? Yeah, well, look, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yes, I know. Of course I know. I was ringing a few friends just now, but it won't be for long. They'll all come crawling back. I've got a few things to do first, though. Eddie. Eddie welched on me. All through, for five years, kept telling me all sorts of lies inside. He took Sheila and sent her into me with lies. How everything was being done for me. Oh, <laughs> I'll break their backs. Mr. Spindle, you're not in any position to... To what? To what, Larry? To talk so openly. I always talked openly, Larry. It's a free country. My country, Larry. My kingdom. Look, Mr. Spindle. Ali! For God's sake. Alex! Oh, you knew what my organization was like. Of course, you only saw one side of it, the motor part. But Eddie's doing a deal with the North. With Mackelson. And the whisper is that will merge soon, North and South. Hmm. You know, there's already a lot of Mackelson men in with Eddie. Oh, do you know that? <laughs> you don't ask, do you? Well, not if you're me, anyway. But he better know it. Or else Mackelson's slicing him very thin without him even notice, which I doubt. You know, Mackelson's men replaced yours. Remember Billy Humphreys? I want to say he's dead. Mark Finch definitely is. Mm. Rex Young. Yes. Yes, I know. Yes, I heard all the old ones. Where's Eddie living now? Birchwood Drive, Burley. Um, got a pen. <laughs> it's a big place. Stands on its own ground. Yes. Woodside, it's called. What's he now? Gold plated? Yeah. Right the way through, Mr. Spindle. You going? Yeah, I, I, I've got to get on. Oh. Be seen with me and you won't get on. Huh? Look, Mr. Spindle, there was a fellow tried to help Rex Yeomans before he got killed. He's blind now. You ask him about it and he talks about some kind of a stupid accident. He never mentions Eddie. You see, by myself, I'm invisible. With you, I'm not. I'll get back, Larry. You won't get back. The odds are too big. All right. All right. Believe that and go. Okay. Right. When I see Eddie, I may mention you. You know, say how you lent me your car. How I said I need some place to operate from. And you said, well, uh, why not use mine? Hmm? The keys, Larry. Or you're blind. Or dead. Either way. Sheep or wolf. Aren't you? Now, you, 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 you couldn't... I wasn't so tender. Even in the old soft days, was I, Larry? Now with me. Or later without anybody. the car. The flat, 42 Linden Road. I want to see Mr. Edwards. Your name, please, sir? Mr. Spindle. Right. Keep bloody boss over marked. 
Could be we discipline him. Uh, cheers. Sir? Mr. Spinner, sir. Spinner? Thank you. <laughs> she got your name wrong, Alec. Pants in here. Alec. Well, after all this time. I had to look for you, Eddie. No. Everybody knows where I live. Even little Larry Bolsover, I gather. That is card outside. Alec Hans Birkbow. You see how I got his name? Alec Spindo, at last. You pay him out of my money. Oh, you are five years back, aren't you? You got thinner, Alec. All right, you can talk to me now. <laughs> oh, yes. Five years back. Yes, well, I've been catching up this morning. Have you? You'll need a drink, then. No. Oh, now, come on, Alec. You were never really teetotal. Celebration drink. Now you've done your time. I heard you were deep blocks, Baron. Why did I ever trust you? And Sheila, how is Sheila? Happy. Entirely happy with me. Flourishing. You kept it a bit short even before you went inside. They don't forgive, Alec. Oh, no. Sense of proportion, that's what we've got to keep. I'll take a lager. There was no one else who knew it all. That was the reason. Oh, no. No, that wasn't it. Whew. You used to have a diamond sharp memory. You trusted me because you underestimated me. I face it, Alec, you did. It is all mouth and muscle. That's how you saw me. I'd make a good caretaker. Now, well, come on, admit it. Not too sharp, was I? To monkey with what you'd got, but steady enough to hold on hard and then hold and hand it over for half an apple and a pat on the back. Like in the Bible and the other way around. That's what you calculated five years back, didn't you? Didn't you? Who are you asking it? Yeah, who else is there? <laughs> I'll run through what you left me to caretake. It's like looking through binoculars the wrong way. Three organizations. One legitimate, two bent. Your eight legal betting shops first. The sunny side of the street, fine. They were doing nicely for what they were. Only now they're a chain of 25. Now the other side. Protection first. Well, this was the most developed area, but discipline was slack. The men had no morale, and because of it, your clients weren't getting pressed as hard as they should have been. Too many little people making little pieces for themselves on the side. <laughs> and your accounting system was amateur. I got rid of... man you left in charge. What was his name? Uh, Rex something. Ah, oh, gone, anyway. He was double-crossing you, Alec. You're digging your grave, Eddie. Oh, no. That's yours you're looking at. Third, your motor trade outlets. Efficient. Except that each year conversion costs rose while second-hand car prices didn't. It was soon pretty bloody plain. It didn't pay to steal anybody's motor. Quite the reverse. We were selling at below conversion costs just to get them the hell out of the garages. So I sold up. Just like you'd have done. Had you been out? I've been to the bank this morning. You won't justify yourself. I'm favoring you with the facts, Alec. So it's clear. So you've got no illusions about where you stand. In debt and in gratitude to me. Sheila is... This has nothing to do with Sheila. Nothing. 
Eddie, I said I'd been to the bank. Pocket money, that's all that was. I needed something to landscape the garden, Alec. Your signature was easy. Half was in Sheila's name anyway, and I hadn't finished. I developed six gambling casinos under Edwards Enterprises. Built up a security firm, Protector Incorporated, which is now the biggest this side of the river. And from the information gathered from it, legally, I went into consumer goods. Last year's turnover alone was 3.2 million. Protector Incorporated enjoys the full confidence of the law and business, so... So do I. A whole empire, Alec. From a couple of cheap back street rackets. And Billy Humphreys? What was the business efficiency behind his killing? Mm. <laughs> oh, you know as much as me. And then there's Mackelson, north of the river. My friend Henry? We respect each other's position. A geography dictates it, doesn't it? Him up there, me down here, and the river between us. Nature's own carnival. Why didn't you meet me coming out of prison this morning, Eddie? Mackelson did. Eddie, too busy. Well, Mackelson wasn't. No, oh, he's an old man, doesn't get many kicks anymore. Besides, North's been going a long time, runs itself. The South, thanks to me, just begun to match it. So there you are, Alec. You? With no claim on me, but me able and willing, Alec, to offer you a job, if you'd like it. I'm very big with the Ex-Prisoners Association. What job, Eddie? Well, I haven't had time to think. Don't know what you're capable of anymore, but something. There'll be something down the line somewhere, you'll understand. Despite being five years back, Take your hands from me. No hands, no. Thanks all the same. You can go. Alex clearly harmless. <laughs> He's very physical. Nothing's real for him till he hits it. Well, I'll think over my offer of a job, Alex, fairly quickly, because I don't even need to offer you one. I want to see Sheila. No, it only upset her. Let her keep her memory of you as you used to be. Eddie, I'll... It's not that way anymore. I've explained enough, surely. You never used to threaten what you couldn't do, Alec. You used to accuse me of that. Time you went. You used to say money was like time. You think you've got a lot of it, but you haven't, unless you use it. Well, I've used both, Alec. Like you advised. So you can't really feel let down, can you? <laughs> and his little joke. Better pump them up, Alec. <laughs> Edward says you must pump up your tires. Turn around. Walk ahead of me. Hey, you'll see him in a minute. He's changed so much you won't recognize him. <laughs> like a ghost. Eddie, please, I can't walk. Ah, yes. It's important for me. Yes. <laughs> What a procession. The animals went in two by two when Alec came creeping home. <laughs> Sheila wanted to see you after all, Alec. 
He said you were happy. I am. I've never known what the word meant, exactly. No, you never could enjoy yourself. Well, we're going to enjoy this, aren't we? Oh, yes! Start pumping, Alec. <laughs> Not even his car. I had to borrow it from a friend. Who will regret it? <laughs> Alec, I've been thinking. There's a job going at one of the betting shops, chalking the odds. How about that? Maybe, please, it's enough. It's not. Not for me. My fun comes harder. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Oh, where were we? Jobs, yes. Well, there's night watchman at the warehouse in Woolwich. You could hold that down, I should think. Yes. <laughs> oh, don't make it too hard for him, Han. <laughs> Better. Your job, after all. Fast. I came to see you, Sheila, but Eddie's mouth and foaming lager got in the way. Ali! No! Don't you speak to me. I'm talking to my wife. My legal wife, at least. Sheila. Sheila, why? Well, it's not something you can explain, Alec. Oh, but you can. Sheila, this gun's got five nothing years behind it. You must try. Oh. You wouldn't. Oh, yes. You and Eddie. Not him. He's just machinery. And you first, my darling. Now, why? Because I love him. For himself? Or for what he's made of mine? Oh, for both. He's what you could have been if you had. <laughs> I could have been that. That. Now listen, Sheila, as carefully as you can. I'm addressing you because Eddie's dead. No. You must see that. You will have weighed your love for him against that inevitability for some time, I'm sure. But I want you back. Not your love. You. And not for all my money that you betrayed to him either. No, just for me. For my self-respect, that's all. You back with me. And I shan't be interested in what your feeling for me is. Fear, hate, or whatever it is. Because what you think you think or feel is not my point or purpose. I demand only the act of your return to me. You've got two days. Or die with him. Go for him. No! Ah, he's still back in the past. No, Hans. We begin with Bolsover. Bolsover? Yes. Lent Alec the car to shoot his mouth from. At me! Oh, no. No recruits for Alec. Bolsover goes, Hans. Goes as a warning to anyone else who gets sentimental. Then, when I've got Spindo isolated, his disposal can be tidy, noiseless. 
just the way Mackelson and I agreed it would be. <laughs> Better than I dared hope, Arthur. Hans Birkwald reports, somewhat resentfully, I gather, that Spindo forced him to pump up the tyres of his motor car that Hans had amusingly deflated, and then took his gun. We shall need that gun, Arthur. I suggest you detail Hans for that job. It would seem appropriate. Yes, yes, of course. Ideally, with Spindo's print still on it. Furthermore, Spindo has delivered an ultimatum to Sheila, come back to him in two days or die, which gives us our timing for killing her, doesn't it? <laughs> chopped it, just chopped it like that, you know, right out of his hands. And then I had it, and Hans was pumping them up after all. Oh, <laughs> oh, Eddie looked sick. Oh, Jesus, he'd ridden me. Now it is my turn. Didn't even address him. Spoke to Sheila. Told her that Eddie was as good as dead, and so she. Mr. Be... Spindo, uh... Alec, for Christ's sake, how often do I have to tell you? No, where was I? Um, oh, Larry, you bastard. I was telling you, you know, it's gone. Gone. Well, look, it's late. You've had a long day, Mr. Alec. I, I think we've a better big get... day. Not a long day. Big day. Big day. Began like doomsday. It was clearing. Clearing. Even so, this is one of Eddie's places. Somebody will hear us. Well, let him hear. Let him hear how I cut him down. And you mustn't interrupt me. Because it takes time. It takes time, you know, to, to get all the thoughts together in your head. You know, your head has to have time to get used to it again. All the possibilities, the variations, all the actions that will result when you've been inside for some while. You see? You're going to have to lend me more money. No, Alec, let's go home, huh? Money! Money! Come on, I need money. I need money to act. That's what I came here for. Yes. Come on, another ten. Now you can watch me make this a hundred. <laughs> or two. Or three. Beginner's luck. Right, pick him up. Without Alec noticing. Yes. Yes, Hans. So the word gets wide. No one makes friends with Spindle. Eddie? Me. I'm to blame. No. For what? It was me. And I'd always wanted you. No, it's not you, is it? And what's there to blame yourself for? I couldn't... see... anybody... anything... but you. what I liked. Stay that way and you're safe. With me. Now Alec will die. And that other man. Not because of you. It would have been the same without you. Alec knows that. many things I didn't notice. Oh, 
Well, they were there. But I didn't look. Turned away. You shut your eyes. And he'll cope. This prison sent people mad, Eddie. And not Alec. He's always been pretty realistic. Not today. Well, he blew up, but what? We're still here. He could have killed us, but... But no nerve. Nerve's gone. The way he spoke. Oh, oh Eddie. <laughs> you, only you existed. I shut my eyes. The feel of you. That's right. You shut your eyes. No, no, Eddie, not with Alec Watson. Darling, no. he's not. He will be now, always, whatever you we do. Shut your eyes. No. Shut him no, out. Eddie. I've destroyed him. He's gone. <laughs> and not for you, for me! That's it. Mine. Not his. And blame me, I'll wear it. That's right. Not you. Me. That's right, my darling. You see, he's going, isn't he? You see. Seven great. Well, now we can operate, Larry. Well, where'd he go? Did you see him go? Yeah. Hey, better catch those before they look at the money. Oh, yes. And then? Promise good night. Look, why me? What have I done? Spinder. That's why, isn't it, Larry? We can tell Hans he'll be with us in a minute. Uh, business or pleasure? I like him. You know who he is. I like him. He has a gun. My gun. Mr. Mackelson wants it. I thought you worked for Eddie Edwards. Uh, my gun, you're to get it without him noticing too soon. Then phone Mr. Markelson. So, now it's business and pleasure. Just tell him, what? Eddie. It doesn't matter. Yeah. With Mr. Markelson, it is better to have second thoughts. Or you could lose your job. Days appreciated from four pounds of jail money to four hundred. Oh, what is it? It's nothing. You just have to wait, that's all. Mister. No, I don't mind it. Larry. Plenty of time, Alec. No, not from me. Not after five years.
Who's that? Oh, don't touch it. No. <laughs> I'll tell you the story of that later. <laughs> it's very funny now. A real room. And a real person. Do you like a bath, Alex? No, later, later, later. Everything's later with you, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Time to have you, just as you are. Yes, you're the present. The future can wait. That's its job. To wait for me. Good. Put that on. Now tilt the hat down a little. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Well, you wouldn't deceive me. But then it's not me I'm asking you to deceive, is it? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs>